school. But I really hope during this presentation to really break it down step by step, so that we fully understand everything in this title and we understand what it means and why it's important. Okay, so what's the importance of antennas? Antennas are the basics of telecommunications. So when we talk about the internet, when we're talking about cell phones, we have to have antennas. In fact, your cell phone has more than one antenna. You need one for GPS, one for calls, one for the internet. Different applications means different antennas. So they're very important when we're talking about telecommunication. And the way they're able to communicate is by emitting signals. And these signals are in forms of electromagnetic waves. And really, that's just a really complex name for a signal that you can't really see. Now to the right, or to the left, you can see this is a picture of an antenna. In the red is what we call the frontal lobe of the electromagnetic wave. And in the pink are the side lobes of the electromagnetic wave. And this is pretty much just a signal. Antennas can emit and receive signals. So this one in particular is emitting an electromagnetic wave and another antenna has the ability to receive it. And that's the way we use that in telecommunication. So what are millimeter waves and why are they important? Was as millimeter waves are another way of saying a, an antenna that's a, in, a millimeter wave is an electromagnetic wave with a high frequency. So when we talk about high frequency, we're talking about antennas that can emit high frequency electromagnetic waves as shown before. Today, I would say um, in most cell phones, for example, we emit more of a mid, not low frequency, but about a mid. And in my particular lab, which is the Electroscience Laboratory, we're working with high frequency antennas. So to give you an example, um, your cell phone probably emits a frequency at about three megahertz. Well, now we're looking at gigahertz, hundreds of gigahertz, which is 10 to 100 times higher frequency than what your cell phone is able to produce. And it, this figure, I really think, demonstrates the importance of high frequency antennas. You see, all this technology is bound in the mid gigahertz or mid frequency area. Now, if we're able to use high frequency antennas and high frequency technology, we can unlock this empty space that's not currently being used. As more technology is being developed, this spectrum is becoming clustered. And so we need to free up more um, space. Many people are familiar with autonomous vehicles, self-driving cars and such. But the technology behind it is improving. And really, the only way we're all going to be able to have self-driving cars, they need to be able to communicate with each other, especially on a highway or freeway. Well, that's where you know, high frequency antennas need to, to be, that's why high frequency antennas need to be developed. Now, the difficulty with millimeter waves is that since they're a high frequency, that means they're really small. And so they can be absorbed by a lot of different objects. I'm talking about walls. So if you try to emit, you know, if you call someone outside of this room, your wave, your signal can leave this, the walls in this building. With high frequency, the higher frequency you get, it might not be able to do that. In some cases, if the frequency is really high, rain will either, either can disrupt the signal. So that's really why more study is needed and more research is needed towards developing antennas that are able to operate at high frequencies. So of course, with more testing, more research being done with high frequency antennas, my job was to design a robotic system to um, implement and test the different antennas that are being made at the um, laboratory that I'm in. So they're making them and I'm designing a robotic system that is able to take measurements on them. Now, when I first came into the lab about three, for about three weeks, I was doing research more. I was calling different companies and asking them the price of their industrial robotic arms. As you can see to the left, that's an example of an industrial robotic arm. And usually it has about six axes. And an axis means that it has a motor and it can turn. So if it turns like this, at this point, it has one axis. If it also turns here, that's two. These, in, in this case, this has six. And the problem with this was these robots were extremely expensive. We're talking about 
up to forty to fifty thousand um, dollars. Of course, these robots are used for a wide variety of different things. So my mindset was, okay, we can pay this much to do this, but it'll do way more than we need it to. We need some. We need a specific movement. And then, although this robot can do that, and that's what a, a lot of researchers in the past have used a robot exactly like this, we can develop something of our own that's much cheaper and much less expensive. And so the, the methodology that we use was a spherical far field antenna measuring. So as you can see to the left, there's an antenna emitting an electromagnetic magnetic wave that I, that I described before. And across the little arrows is where the measuring antenna would pick up the signal from the emitting antenna. And that antenna would allow for us to capture the, the electromagnetic waves or the signals emitting from the antenna under test, and that can be used for measurement. So keep in mind that that's why we call it spherical, and far field relates to the fact that we're receiving the antennas, although we're not far away, we can use different equations to, to um, analyze how it would be able to react if it was farther away. Because that's really what the focus is. We don't want, it doesn't really matter if they can talk when they're right here, you can use a wire for that. We're trying to look at it when they're hundreds of miles apart. And so the main thing to take away from spherical far field antenna measurement is that it has to revolve around it, revolve around the measuring antenna and while it's revolving, it has to rotate 90 degrees when it's done. And the reason for that is because you need to understand the orientation of the wave. Now, although this is a 2D picture, right, it's actually three-dimensional. Those, um, the red lobe and the side lobes, are actually three-dimensional. And so we need to rotate 90 degrees to get all different angles of it, if that, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and also using, we, we chose to use the spherical method because it, it, it's able to analyze all parts of the lobe since we're going, going in a com complete sphere. We're able to go to the side lobes, to the frontal lobe, and then all the way to the bottom to the next side lobe. Okay, so the, the materials that I use for my robotic system. Um, number, the first uh, few materials that I used were stepper motors. I needed two of them. That's why it's called a two-axis robotic system. So there's two axes of motion. One that carries it going this way, and one that rotates it 90 degrees as I described before. And I chose to use stepper motors because stepper motors are extremely accurate in the way they move. They may not be as powerful, but the robotic system, the way I, that I designed it, which we'll see later on, it doesn't need to be too strong because it's made of light material. Um, I also used a microcontroller, and really, this is just um, a piece of technology that is used so I can communicate with the stepper motors through my computer. So if I type something in my computer, it goes through the microcontroller, the microcontroller reads it, and based on what the microcontroller says, it tells the motors to move a certain degree. And then to construct the body of the robot, I chose to use aluminum, or high density polyethylene. Um, these materials were chosen due to their light weight, but also sturdiness. Now since this is taking measurements, it needs to be accurate, so I couldn't use a material that'll wobble too much, or that wouldn't be sturdy. But I also needed something that was strong enough to stay in place, and I felt like these two materials were perfect. So the first part of the robot is always the base. This is where everything starts off at, the bottom of the robot. I decided to make the, the base a circle because we need, it, we need to connect something to the end of it to have a circular movement in, in the shape of a sphere. And this, this is really, since this is the base, this is what carries the robot in a spherical shape. This is the first arm of the robot, so this is connected to the base. And what it does is, is it provides the radius of the sphere that's revolving around. Now as you can see, there are different holes located throughout this first arm. It's from five centimeters to about 50 centimeters. So this really helps adjusting how far we're taking the measurements from the antenna. 
Okay, this is the second arm. The second arm is meant to extend from the base and actually look over the antenna. So if this is the first arm, this is the base, now we're looking over the antenna with the second arm, which is right here. Right here, this hole right here actually holds the second stepper motor. And what that stepper motor is gonna do is rotate it 90 degrees. This hole is meant to feed through um, the measuring antenna, which is what we're rotating, what we're taking measurements with. And so this is the final construction. This is what it looks like um, complete. I was only able to completely design it through SolidWorks, through um, time constraint. But as you can see, the base starts here. The first arm is right here and it extends. And you can also move this to adjust the length of how far you want it to rotate outwards. This is the second arm. It holds the stepper motor right here. And down here is where the measuring antenna would be located and it would rotate coming out of the screen like this way. Or if you want to view it from the front view, it would go up and then it go over here. And the antenna under test would be under here, making, um, emitting electromagnetic waves. And the measuring antenna would be picking them up for measurement. And to conclude, this is the robotic system. I included a picture with the stepper motors actually in place so you could get a more clear visual. This stepper motor would carry it, like I said, over overhead. <coughs> and I, for further um, for further research is needed to test the robot, see what material is needed to, to what, what material is best for testing and different things like that. And I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs>